I can say some of them are well okay and in some area I see the people who they appoint to are not supposed to be in the line of aviation I don't see where festos should be there because uh, in this country there's a time we discuss it some sensitive area of appointing a minister you should have a little knowledge of that uh, in my own opinion I see in the aviation knowledge. I don't see where they put a lawyer into an aviation session. In that area, I see that uh, the appointment, to me on my own view, is not the right person to be appointed to that session. In the aspect of serving senator, I don't see where already elected person that is taking a job will be asked to come and be a minister again when there is other people there waiting for us. So in that aspect, I saw it, in my own opinion, I saw it very wrong way. To somebody already swearing as a minister, as a senate, to leave the position and come back for, to come and be a minister. And why that place will be vacant in the next few months, was I need to do the by-election again. So when you are complaining about the economies and the people, the money they will spend in the materials for election again, I saw they should channel the money to somewhere else, where others, because masses are suffering in this country, to be honest. So to you, to you, moving someone already in a position to come and be another position, why that place will be vacant, and the election is going to conduct for that, and they will spend money for material and other things. Yes, my advice to government, they should pull the people, the portfolio for any minister or any appointee. It should be somebody that have a knowledge on that aspect. Not to just pick somebody because you work with you during the election, you just attach a portfolio to somebody that's not having a knowledge. An aspect of head, you should not just pick somebody that should come ahead, the Minister of Head or Education. So it should be a person that is in the education line to channel into an education. Because in the last administration, we we'll see what happened when the Minister of Head, uh, Education, we don't even know where he is, school are struck for so many months. So the appointment should be based on merit. And well, we can see um, some due diligence has been done and a team of eminent Nigerians have been put forward. And it shows a diverse team. For the first time, we have a greater percentage of females involved in the cabinet level. And yeah, we should give them some time and let's see the products of the work. From the team, we can see there is a lot of politicians. There are some technocrats. And there are some that advocate to be political technocrats. So what this means is someone that has been in the technical field for a while and then decided to turn into politics in order to contribute their own quota to the Nigeria society. So if you look at the Ministry of Education, it's someone that has the educational background as well as a seasoned lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria. So you can see he clearly fits the role of education because of his contribution towards the law school in Nigeria. So we can use that as a template to replicate on the greater level of education in Nigeria. So you can see definitely there is track record there. From what we understand as the layman language, the Senate was there to verify the certificates and just the general information and for the candidates to showcase their skills to Nigerians. And we can see some of the candidates who were unable to make it through to the next stage. So there is a certain reasoning that happened, what transpired. So in all honesty, they are all competent people to lead each ministry. There's always room for improvement. So what we can look at what we did previously and where are we right now and what we can do moving forward in terms of giving Nigerians a better governance and a better society as a whole. Like our democracy is still imperfect. It has its own questions, but it's all part of the bigger picture.
my worry about the whole thing, first we requested for persons with disabilities to be appointed in politics. We didn't see anything so far come out of that. It hurts. It is really bad. The community of persons with disabilities, if you put 15% of us estimated, that's about 30 million people that you have left behind. There is a law to that effect, so we're not begging. The, dis uh, the discrimination against the provision of persons um, disability act of, act of 2018 says that 5% of all employment, it is a sum, all employment, at least 5% must be reserved for persons with disabilities. We should have gotten one minister. We hear there's one minister there, though. We have not confirmed because he has not identified with us. We are, we sh he has an acquired um, disability. So we hope that um, that will be addressed. PSSAs and all that, you know, the essence of having people of persons with disabilities in governance is that it will improve inclusion. We have started this battle. We have started this challenge. We have started this journey. Until we get as many of us in there, we will not rest. So no retreat, no surrender on that. For the quality, the screening process, well, Nigeria is a country of buy and go. So we keep wondering why dollar and our economy is not working. Because the dollar is buying and going. Our Naira will do, all of them are buying and going. You see, until we wake up and we're ready to do the work, we're not certain we won't get there. Um, I saw the list of ministers. In one breath, you say, um, work for the boys. Or there's a way they put it, you know, settlement for the boys. From the portfolios given, they didn't have a mix or a large chunk of experts to do things. But from the way they have allotted some of the things, you will say, well, um, some people have capacity and sagacity to deliver. Some will do well where they put them because they have the experience to do so. In some places, I tell you, I can see full-blown disaster coming up. I will not mention where because I don't want to cry out more than the... Uh, I don't want to be the bearer of sad news. But one thing I can say to government as an advice is that they should have key performance indicators. The president has only six months. You should give them six months to perform. If you are put in power and, you're, and we don't have 10,000 megawatts of electricity, now let me tell you the truth. The money from donor agencies, from World Bank, from um, World Bank, Africa, development, gas, every, look, it's not rocket science. If I were the president, 10,000 megawatts must be generated. Not That is added to what we have. So we will be talking about 14,000, 15,000 megawatts. If my minister of power does not deliver that, fire him. If the minister of um, um, FCT, Winke, if FCT does not see a robust change within the next... So you must give key performance indicators to everybody which reprimands that if you do not perform, you score sheets, you score them. Get people to score them, consultants, the public, everybody. The voice of public opinion will even tell him that he's doing well or that he's not doing well. So um, the other one is um, the issue of women. Nigeria is not doing well when it comes to it. The affirmative action for women is 35%. National Assembly has less than 15% action there. Even in the cabinet, nine women, I think, out of 45. That gives me 20, 20. That says 20. So we're still 15% short. Nigeria must wake up. You see, I'm a person with disabilities. If we cannot take care of our vulnerable like women, waiting there for people with disabilities, it's crazy. But we must not give up. We have a country to build. We'll keep pushing. We'll keep working. Peacefully, we'll get there. I believe in peaceful protest, peaceful agitation. And I know that with the right people in governance, things will change. I will not give up on Nigeria, not now, not ever. But I tell you, women and persons with disabilities are not happy. The government must know that. Of course, the youth are not happy too. But all these are challenges that will come, we will overcome. We're a developing country. We hope that 
will overcome all these issues of development, time will tell. But while waiting, the cabinet has been formed. Let's give them six months. After six months, we'll come back to the drawing board and we'll know what next to do. Thank you. Well, I think politics generally deals with uh, people favoring people that they know or people that have worked with them. So it's not really far from the truth that the president, of course, chose people that we are within through the struggles of the political scenes that um, got him emerging as the president of Nigeria. So there is a very large tendency that, of course, he has to, first of all, sort out his friends and um, people that helped him in, in getting the position. Well, I think the federal character somehow uh, played a role because every state got a minister. Then when it deals with checking the track record, the background, uh, the personal achievements and experiences, so the National Assembly, especially the Senate, has a role to play, not the president who nominated them. I think uh, because no matter how good or bad a person is, the National Assembly is the one to say this person is good or fit to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Gender equality in politics, what does it mean? Do you know that only 23% of the world's politicians are women? The lack of female political leaders on the world stage is all too visible. You have to look no further than the 2017 family photo from the G20. Of the 36 people in the picture only 4 were women. According to weforum.org, Rwanda is a surprise leader in female political participation. Its position at the top of the list of countries with the most female parliamentarians, 49 out of 80. The evidence of gender discrimination is rooted in history, tradition and culture. While the female sex constitutes slightly more than 50% of the population, only 14 of the total 200 governments, or 7%, are headed by women. Around the world, women are closing the gender gap in areas such as health and education, but significant gender inequality persists in politics. Democracy is not democratic without equality, while women in politics experience violence and intimidation. UN Women in 2016 identified four ways to increase female participation in government. First, setting numerical targets for women in leadership positions. Second, expanding and diversifying the pool of qualified and capable women able to run for election. Third, increasing awareness of the benefits that women in politics bring, and finally, encouraging support for them among governing institutions. And well, with more balanced societies, we are better able to gain peace and prosperity. It's quite amazing. I think uh, women involving in politics is, is a boost to our own uh, democracy, my own understanding. Because, like what they say, what a man can do, a woman can do better. They feel inferior to our women. So, the way they are involving and more women are be taken into the politics, I'm very happy in that aspect. Well, women should be involved. Everyone should be involved in politics because it's a way of contributing your own quota to the Nigerian society. And women, it's a welcome development because we've never had anything like that before. And it's a good step in the right direction, personally speaking. So would you so, say Nigeria political system give encouragement to women in active politics when it comes to holding elective positions? Yes, of course, even youth, because each demographic should be involved in the governance. The youth, the youth should be involved because we make majority of the population. So equally, the female make the population as well. So everyone should have an equal representation on the team, in my opinion. For a better Nigerian, for true democracy, what is your advice to the government? 
Right, well, I think we should strengthen our own democratic institutions. For example, the Independent National Electoral Commission. We can see what we did previously and how we can improve it. As well as things like voters' education. People should be enlightened about their rights, their, you know, what you can do, how you can provide your own contribution in terms of taking active part in politics. You don't have to be voted, but you can vote. You can enlighten people on their rights. You can encourage people to sign up for INEC registration. You know, it's not partisan politics.